After exploring Caldera, Lorena decided to check out the city's economic backbone, the Caldera Ebony Mine. However, he learned that House Lalu also uses the beast races as slaves. Not sure what to make of this, Lorena did as usual and explored another ancestral tomb. Within the tomb, he fought his first lich, which was guarding an ebony crossbow. When he returned back to Caldera, Lorena realized he could rank up in the Mage's Guild and became a conjurer for the price of 200 drakes. Lorena found Creeper again and was able to sell the ebony crossbow for quite a nice sum. After all had been said and done, Lorena decided to cast an TV intervention on himself to return back to Balmora. And with that folks, I'd like to welcome you back to the Morrowind Let's Play, Part 21. Alright, hey folks. So, we are back in Morrowind. We're back in Balmora to be specific. And uh, first thing we're going to do is we're going to head back to Kayas Kassad's house and uh, see what he's up to. Because we've given him a few days and he said he needed some time to think about stuff. We did a little freelance work like he asked. We'll go back over there. I do find it rather interesting, my uh, relationship with Kaius, because of course I was just sent from prison straight to Morrowind to go talk to him and work with the Blades, and I'm a Dark Elf myself, and at least I'd imagine Loreno has been trying to reconnect with his people, but he does have some uh, empirical tendencies when it comes to the opinion of other races. It's hard because he wants to adopt the Dunmary way of despising the Outlanders, but not necessarily in a xenophobic, racist way, much more in a, uh, honestly, a nationalistic way in wanting his his people to own their land and be separate from the Empire, which this is a different universe from ours, so uh, we'll keep the opinions to that and see how things turn out. But yeah, he, he wants to see Morrowind thrive as his own independent nation, but that doesn't mean he has to hate others for it. At least, especially because that's what the Tribunal's been teaching him. The Tribunal Temple has been teaching of compassion of enemies and, uh, you know, negotiating through differences. So, I don't really understand the uh, side of slavery and everything like that. So, House Hlalu, House Redoran, House Telvani. It's going to be difficult if we're looking at joining one of those houses. Because Telvani is probably out of the picture, even though I like magic. Just because they are incredibly indifferent about the use of slaves. House Halalu, we visited that ebony mine and saw everything that was happening up there, and, I mean, that wasn't good. It was not a pleasant sight to see. The House Redoran, I haven't heard too much about the slavery with them. I, I feel like I'm probably blanking and omitting some information. Hey, I'm talking to you. <laughs> and I'm talking to myself. It's kind of creepy. But, uh, House Redoran seems honorable enough and respectable towards the other races. They are very, very nationalistic though towards Morrowind. Not necessarily meaning they hate other races, but they don't like outlanders. But yeah, enough with all that. Let's let's talk to Caius in here. Oh yeah, and that skooma pipe as well. We still have that skooma pipe on us, Sia's. And I believe we had a note with it too that was saying it was yeah, Sea of Balmora. So I wonder if he has a, a friend here, because the skooma pipe does weigh two pounds, so I'd like to get rid of it. We'll see if uh, he had a friend here or something, and I don't wanna don't wanna be that guy. But first place we should probably start looking would be Khajiit. Just well just met. saying. Anyways, Caius, you beautiful shirtless man, are you uh ready to talk any more about some orders for me? We need an Ashlander informant. I have heard a fellow in Aldrune named Hasor Zan Subani, an Ashlander who left the Waste to become a wealthy trader. They say the Ashlanders like to give and receive presents. Take these 100 drakes, find out what Zan Subani likes, and get him a gift. Then give him the gift and see what he will tell you about the Ashlanders and the Nervarine cult, then report back to me. I don't know much about the Ashlanders. Most people say they're murderous savages, but most people are idiots. I know they hate their settled Dunward cousins almost as much as they hate Westerners. They must be tough to live in the Ashlands. I don't think any Outlanders can become members of the tribes. I don't know why anyone would want to. Awesome. Oh yeah, what do you have to say about Soul Sigmas too? That's the temple name for being crazy. The Dunmer are humorless bastards. They don't like strange behavior. It makes them nervous. Eccentric isn't charming for them. It's dangerous. The natives are very tickled. Tickle it, or just tickle, are very tight checked, and you will be too if you want to avoid unwanted attention. Okay, so keep to yourself. I get that, but I don't necessarily agree with this this idea of humorless bastards. I mean, I've had some pretty pretty messed up dreams 
of a man in a golden mask. And I've heard some other people mentioning the same things. I actually found a bloodstained journal earlier of a person from the sixth cult. So maybe the soul sickness isn't as crazy as you make it out to be, Caius. Let's uh, let's talk about Hassar. Do you know anything about him? Aldscar in and Aldrud first. Oh, I have to go back up to Aldrun. More respectable place. Okay, I'd have to go up to Aldrun again. Well, anyways, let's look around a little bit for some Khajiit. All right, so we're in the Balmora Temple, and I was just looking around to see if I could do any duties here as well, and I'll see if there are any, but I noticed this woman makes spells, right? I've seen this before, and I think I'm just going to jump in and make a... Uh, yeah, I believe it's just touch. I'm going to make an open spell for 100. Area... One, two. Do I just make it one? Do I make it zero if it's untouched? I'll try. And let's call it a uh, Randevi's. Um, let's think here. Randevi's Lockbreaker. Yeah. Let's call it that. Um, yeah. So let's look at this. It's going to be down here because I named it with an R. So I have a 35 chance to do it. But let's look at the... Uh... Yeah, so I have to get more alteration up. Yeah, so now we have a 100 lock spell. I'm pretty sure that can get us into any area in the game. Even Vivex Temple. So I'm just going to look around and see if there's any other duties to do here. Do you have any duties for me? Yes, Outlander. What may I do for you? I don't think you do. Oh, maybe you do. But first, uh, can we advance? Oh, we can. We're in adept now. Do you have any duties? I don't have any duties for you. Speak in Aldrun or Malagmar. Okay. Well, thank you. Bye-bye. Oh, yes. And also, by the way, I did not know there was a whole other shopping district on the top level up there with a bunch of fancy shops. So... I did decide to upgrade the drip a little bit. I was looking at the uh, extravagant, are these the extravagant robes, is that what their names are? The exquisite robes. And when I went in there at first, she had the blue and the white one as well. And they disappeared out of existence after I reloaded. Don't know what happened with that, but uh, I chose this one. I know it's a bit flashy, but hey, it's exquisite for a reason. We also got some new pants and a better belt too. But I just thought I'd get some fun clothes. All right, I uh, I did it again, guys. I uh, found the uh, famous <coughs> pillow lady's house, and uh, she was talking about cave rats, and said that the fighters guild was coming to take care of it. And I was like, okay, whatever. And I went upstairs and saw a locked door, and I had to open it. And I went inside, and the cave rats were in there. And I killed them, went downstairs, and she paid me a hundred gold. So we accidentally did the quest. Now uh, we're just gonna keep looking for. The Khajiit. Alright, so we slept through the night, and I think I finally found the Khajiit's house I was looking for. Sia's. Do I have to break in? I think I have to break in. Let's give it a quick save real quick, and let's get my new unlocking spell. Alright. And I don't have a bounty, do I? Nope. Let's just get inside. Hey, so, uh, I'm looking for you, actually. What do you mean, Yila? What do you mean you are looking for me? I don't know you, do I? You say you found a note from Ernil? Yeah, there was a dead body and I found a note on him. You've got a note from Ernil for Sia? That's odd. Sia was expecting here any day now. Y he's dead? Oh no. Ernil was a good man and always dealt fairly. Sia doesn't suppose you found anything he might have been delivering to Sia, did you? Actually, I did. This is yours, I believe. Oh, this will. This was really for a friend. Never mind. Thank you for returning it. See, I can't imagine you care whose it is. In fact, take this. It was supposed to be Ernest when he brought Sia these things. Oh, the pipes are removed. 50 gold has been added. Nice. She gave me 10 moon sugar. Hmm. Now, uh. I was wondering about going over to the Mage's Guild because I remember I also did that quest up in Margon for the Mage's Guild, so we need to report back on that. I was wondering if the uh, Khajiit in there will take the moon sugar if I try selling it to him. Hello, Rainus. Yes. I killed her. Mm-hmm. 
She was truly dead? You have done me. The guild, that is a great service. This scroll should help you deal with any other necromancers you find. Elemental. Okay, and any other duties for me? A Telvanni spy? Go to the guild halls and add a room to Vivek. See it more. I'm sure there's a spy. When you find the spy, do not take any action. Report back to me. Join us. All right. Okay. Um, Do you train me now? Oh, you can train me. Oh, you offer way better barriers. Let's get a barrier six going on. And is there anything else I want? I don't think there's anything else I want. Silence. No. Burden. Feather. Wild. That's interesting. Chameleon. No, I think I'm okay. And do you train me now? Oh, you can. Nice. Okay. Well, cool. We're gonna go check on the Khajiit then. Hello, Ajira. You take my moon sugar? You will. Thank you. Let's get a little bit more gold out of you. Thank you. Thank you. Please come again. Yeah, for training now. And I forget, did he have other duties for me now? It's Ashlander. Yes, but they're not ready for you. Um, I have to be a warlock. Okay. Cool. Let's uh keep moving then. All right. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna quickly just pop up to Aldrun and we're gonna talk to Kaisa's informant as well as ask around in Aldrun the mage's guild about the uh, Tovani spy, but I'll meet you folks up there in just a second. Hey folks, so uh, I'm on top of a uh, whole Marin keep, and I uh, I wasn't recording because I was just exploring as we were heading back over to Aldrun. I know it's a little bit off the beaten path, but we were just exploring around here, and I saw this place and was like, oh, it's just going to be a little low-level dungeon. And then this woman's on top. She's barely taken any damage, so I'm just like, okay, it just must be grindy. No, she's wearing ebony armor. And she's got a special spear called Stormforge on her. I'm over encumbered now. Um, yeah, it's pretty. <laughs> the spear looks really interesting too. Oh yeah, we found a uh, Red Rin hat as well, which like is definitely like worse than the Ebony Helm, except just with my light armor skill, it's better at this point. It gives me the same armor rating, so uh, I'm gonna wear it instead. Um, but yeah. <laughs> Sorry about not getting any of that. You can see all my stuff on the ground there because I had to uh, throw everything on the ground to give myself enough inventory space. And I am because casting feather on myself for the next 30 minutes <laughs> until I can sell some stuff. And we have a bunch of scrolls that I picked up and ingredients and potions and such that we'll be able to sell. Yeah. <laughs> that was pretty fun. Sorry I didn't record that. Hey folks, I know it's a little bit funny, but we are back in Balmora. Uh, we just had to sell some stuff off. We were very overweight. But we're going to make our way over to Aldrun now. And also, I did just talk to a temple magister. And they were talking to me about Rannis from the Mages Guild. And I was considering telling... You know, I would imagine that there'd be a way to tell her off. It's to make her look like the spy. Um, and if there is a case where that was going to happen, I was considering doing it. But I just heard that the reason why she has such a vendetta against other wizards is because her family was murdered by untrained wizards but we'll see we'll see we'll, we'll keep thinking about it let's so uh, let's get to Aldrun now all right folks we're in Aldrun so uh let's check out the mages guild first and seeing about that spy that i've been hearing about edwina you know anything about a uh, telvani spy you would never expect it except a telvani spy okay so i think that's this one done then. All right, yeah, it doesn't seem like anybody in here knew about it, so uh, let's go make our way up to the Scar Inn and see if we can find that. All right, so I gotta find Hassour. I gotta get him a gift first. I would imagine, do you know anything about Hassour? Yes, you do. He's a trader and a wealthy one. He has a own room here. He was born in Ashlander, knows the speech and customs, and has grown rich by trading things with Westerners. Is that what you wanted to know? I need a little bit more. Trader, but he retired here in Alderaan and enjoyed reading poetry about his people. Hmm. Okay, let's uh, let's see if we can go get a book about poetry. Hello. Yes, the Ashlander Trader, a bibliophile like poetry, and I have such volumes here. I believe Words of Wind, Ashland Hymns, the Five Star Fars, are around here somewhere. So let's see, Ashland Hymns. Let's do that one. 
Can I get it for 230? Yes. All right, let's see if this is good enough for him. That was a little bit more than what uh, Caius gave me, but it's fine. I want to learn about the Ashlanders. Where are you, bud? Oh, does he have all the books here? He does. Red Book of Riddles. Maybe I should have gone in the wind one. Let's go buy back. Let's go back and buy that one real quick. All right, and what was the other one's name again? Words of the Wind. Wind. Oh, that one's expensive too. That's whatever. It's for the cause. I got some money to spend anyways. All right, let's see if we can find him. Hey, Hassauer. I am Hassauer Zan Subani, or Zane Subani, Subani, Lorena and Devi, may you bless and be blessed. I do not, I do not wish to be rude, but if you have business, speak of it, for I am at leisure and I would prefer to be alone. Well, actually, I do have business, but can I give you a gift first? Yes, I am here for business. I see, you wish to learn of the Ashlanders from me. What other gift-giving customs? A curious question. A gift is a sign of courtesy among strangers. Among strangers, the thoughtful gift is a sign you are cautious and considerate and aware of the other's wants and needs, such as particularly useful for traders and travelers. Among friends, it is a private thing and subtle with great risk, but the test of the gift is how well it was tailored to the receiver. This is a gift for me? I am amazed. A copy of Words of the Wind, the words of the Blessed Mothers. I gratefully accept your gift. My people have never loved the written word, and I lament their ignorant scorn for such common yet... Oh, yeah, potent, potent magic. I thank you, and I honor your courtesy, Lorena and Devi. It would please me to return courtesy by answering your questions. What would you wish to know about the Ashlanders and the Nervering Colt? Nice. So I guess maybe it just picked the first pick out of my inventory or the best one. Because uh, I went through his room, and he had the other ones. Yeah, so what, do you, what, what can you tell me about the Ashlanders? There's too much to tell here. Take these notes. I've written here what you should know about the Ashlanders and the Nevering Cult, but most of all, if you are visiting a camp, there are things you should know about courtesy and challenges among the Ashlanders. And since you're asked about the Nevering Cult, perhaps you'd be interested in the views of Ashlands and foreigners, because a guiding passion of the Nevering Cult is their hatred of foreigners. All right, what about what's this about courtesy? Ashlanders may challenge a stranger who enters a yurt without invi invitation. Customs differ with different tribes, but leave when requested and you may be forgiven. Be particularly careful about Ashkans, tribal chiefs and wise women, tribal seers and counselors. Some are welcoming, some are hostile. Be courteous and leave if requested. If offended, they may attack. Well, challenges. When challenged for sport, it is, acceptable, it is acceptable to decline. When challenged for honor, it is shameful to decline. Honor challenges come from uh, offense given in speech or action, or may represent custom formal challenges of status and ritual. Hmm, good to know. And, uh... What can you tell me about the, uh... Ashlanders and foreigners. Most Ashlanders wish all foreigners and their false gods could be driven from Morrowind. At the very least, Ashlanders wish the foreign devils would leave them in peace. Ashlanders thinks it's shameful to act to attack unarmed persons, but they will kill without hesitation an unarmed person who offends them or their clan laws. No Ashlander is fool enough to make war against the Empire. However, if such a war might be won, many Ashlanders might cheerfully give their lives to win such a war. Good to know. What about the Nervering Cult? They worship the great Ashkon and Hortator, Nerver, Moon, and the Star, who in ages past destroyed the evil godless dwarves and banished the treacherous Dagoth Ur and his foul hosts beneath Red Mountain. The cult is of small consequence in Ashlander worship, and only among the Ushulaku do its followers have any influence. Other Ashlander tribes share the sentiments of the cult, but regard the Nervering prophecies with suspicion and skepticism. What about their worship? All Ashlanders and tribe, young and small, are born into the ancestors' cult of their clan. The Navarine cult is different, though. It is a very small cult, with only a few wise women with the gift of prophecy, and only a few holy warrior heroes who guard and protect the seers. Sul Matul, Ashkan of the Urshilaku, is the warrior protector of the cult, and Nabani Mesa, also from Urshilaku, is the oracle seer of the cult. Okay, and then what can you tell me about uh, Ushulaku then? The Ushulaku are the Ashlanders of the northern Ashlands in the West Gash. It is the north. It is in the northwest of Vardenfell. Ashkan Sulmartul is their chief, a brave and respected war leader and warrior protector of the Navarine cult. The Ushulaku camp moves with the herds, and usually lies to the Sea of Ghosts. I think there was one more thing that may have popped up in here that I wanted to check first. 
All right, now what do you have to say about the uh, Nerebrain cult then? They worshiped the great Ashkon and Hortator, and of our moon, and started to ask about that. Yes, I did. What about the Nerebrain prophecies then? I have heard it said in the prophecies foretell the return of the reincarnated Nerevar, who shall drive the foreigners from the Ashlands, and who shall be cast down with the false god of the temple, who shall cast down the false gods of the temple and restore the true worship of the ancestors. It is a dream that would appeal to every Ashlander, but it is a thought that would a silly ancient legend a little more. But many Ashlands, by many Ashlanders, myself included. I asked you about the camp, right? Move with the herds north of the village of Margon, the northern coast. All right. Can you tell me anything about uh, Margon? Margon is a small village north of Aldrun. A road from Aldrun towards Nisus to the northwest of Margon to the north. Take the right branch at the fork to reach Margon, but it is a long and difficult road and outlanders may get lost. The silt strider goes to Aldrun to, from Aldrun to Margon. It costs little and you don't get risk getting lost. And uh, I think that's all I can, all I want to ask from him. What about, uh, what business do you do? Yes, my friend Lorena and Debbie. You say you want to ask me some questions. What you would, you, what would you wish to know about the Ashlanders and all them? What, what about your life as a trader? I am too old to travel now to risk the beasts and bitter blights of the waste. Now I sit here warm and savor my imported Cyrodiilic brandy while my adventurous son, Hanat Zamsun Bani, assists me in my trade, seeking out sorcer sources of fine ebony and fetching them at fine prices. Ooh, who's your son? I wonder at my son. He has been so long away. Without a word to his father, surely he wishes me to die of worry, so he may inherit this fine brandy. He has proposed to chart the rarely visited ancient underground complex of Mamea, west of Red Mountain. If you should chance to see him in your travels, chide him and tell him an old man longs for news of his son and heir. I will. I'd be, I'd be pleased to. Let's not ask him about the uh, dreams. All right. Cool. Well, that was that was nice. We should uh, let's read his notes real quick, actually. The Ashlanders are the direct descendants of the Aldmeri peoples who followed the prophet Veloth into the lands that we now call Morrowind. The Ashlanders retained the modest nomadic life and simple ancestor worship of their forebears, and despise the soft lives and decadent worship of the settled Greyhouse Dunmer cultures. The wastes are harsh and unforgiving, and we are a hard people. But there is a beauty and honor in our simple lives, and the snobs of the temple and grey houses are fools to dismiss us as crude savages. Ashlanders and foreigners. Most Ashlanders, with all foreigners and their false gods, could be driven from Morrowind. At very least, Ashlanders wish the foreign devils would leave them in peace. Ashlanders think it's shameful to attack unarmed persons, but they will kill without hesitation an armed person who offends them or their clan laws. No Ashlander is fool enough to make war against the Empire. However, such a war might be won, many Ashlanders might cheerfully give their lives to win such a war. I read about that. Ashlander challenges. Ashlander worship. I read about that. Nerebrain cult. Nerebrain prophecies. There's Shilaku. Yeah, I know all that. Cool. That was great. That, I really actually liked that quite a bit. And we'll see if we can find a sun at some point. Yes. Seeks out sources of fine ebony. He visited the ancient underground co co eh, complex of Mamea, west of Red Mountain. And maybe we should check that out. We'll see. Let's, uh, let's think for a second here. And the thinking is done. Imagine that. That quick for that many thoughts. Anyways. So yeah, we uh, we just got the notes from him. Okay, I'm listening. So yeah, so I think we're just going to call it an episode there. It's been about 30 minutes. So uh, yeah, we're going to go back to Balmora next episode and return the notes. And then I think we're going to take a trip back to Vivek finally. Anyways, folks, I thank you as always for watching. Let's get this uh, helmet off for just a second. Yeah, I thank you guys always for watching. And uh, make sure to leave a comment, like it, dislike it, subscribe. It's, it all helps. Anyways, y'all have a good one. Bye-bye.